Thank you for checking out this unboxing. This is the Snacku for May, and as people know, I'm very much into Japanese snacks, Japanese culture, and I like snacks like a lot of people, so here we are. Uh, one of my favorite things to unbox, because as we know, the other things I do are like on collectibles boxes, uh, things like that. Anyway, so the May uh, box, I do want you to know, I can't show you the bottom, but I don't know if you can see how it's a little bit wavy here, how it's kind of like bowing out on the bottom. So basically it's because it got severely wet. Uh, the U.S. Postal Service, I've been having problems with them with a lot of my boxes. Um, actually a lot, yeah, a lot of the boxes I get subscription box wise, I've had a decent amount of issues with, but also just boxes I'll just order for other things. Um, so this one was a situation where they left this and another box that had a, a board game in it just sitting out in the rain. It was actively raining all day. When they delivered it, it was raining. They sat it like they, they can easily set it like FedEx and UPS do under the overhang in the front of my house, like right at the door. It won't get wet. But for some reason, they just decided to set it as far out on the top step as possible so it got drenched. So hopefully everything in here is okay. Should be because they're usually individually packaged things. So, but still, God, USPS terrible. Anyway, let's get into this. Uh, the opening, what it looks like here, very nice. They always have nice wrapping in here. And I'll go ahead and show you the card. Always nice looking card. Yes, looks like a boat on there. You can see a little bit better. And then the items, if you want to look at it right there. But I'll read you the stuff. So they're going to be focusing on a specific dessert shop, snack shop, whatever. Um, I'll read you a thing. Today we're highlighting an amazing boutique snack company in the southern island of Kyushu called Chidoria. Uh, the store was established in 1630, a long time ago, near the port city of Nagasaki, which was the only place in Japan where Western goods were available. Historically, Japan didn't have sugar, and imported stock was only available in Nagasaki. Chidori, uh, Chidoria, sorry, Chidoria, I believe that's how it's pronounced, uh, was one of the first snack stores in Japan to utilize sugar in its snacks. Oh, that's interesting, very historically important then. To this day, they continue to stick true to their roots and hand make all their snacks, using only traditional methods and high quality ingredients. This snack maker has such an abundant repertoire of snacks that we felt it deserved a theme all on its own. This month, we bring you a sampling of their most popular and delectable snacks. Cool. I think the ones on the side, though, the popular snacks, are not related to that theme. I think it's just going to be the main three. Um, so maybe I should just try and do those first. We'll see here. Oh, man, there's a lot of stuff in here. Look at this. There's tons and tons and tons of stuff. I'll have to kind of figure out what's duplicated and what's not here. So, um, all right, let's see if I can find the first one. So this is what they call a Tyrolean hat. Actually even says it on the packaging, Tyrolean hat. Kind of looks like it's like some sort of like wafer-ish cookie with some sort of cream in it. We had one kind of like it in the last video. So, might be kind of similar. I'll open this up. I'll only do about half of it because then I want my wife to be able to try it when she comes home. Oh yeah. So as you can see, very, very thin, very small, two very thin cookie things. I assume there's some filling in there, hence the little bit of space, but it's not a whole lot of space. So what it says about it, the second most popular snack by Chidoria, these wafer sandwiches are also handmade and are the perfect light snack for when you're slightly hungry. They come in three flavors, lemon, strawberry, and coffee. Ooh, coffee is probably really good. Uh, I'm assuming by the smell, it smells really sweet. This might be the strawberry. Lemon, I believe. Yeah, so there's really not, I'm trying to see it. There's not a lot of the filling in there. There's filling. There's not a lot. Very sugary tasting, very light, very crisp. Slight lemoniness. Mm. It's good. The little the cream in there, 
It's very, very creamy when you get enough of it. Very buttery. Mm. Mm. Almost creamy to the point where it's a little bit marshmallow-like. That's good. It's tasty. It's nice. Not like a crazy amount of flavor, like some snacks are like pow with flavor. It's very light. It's sugary. It's sweet. Delicate. I like the texture, how crispy it is. That's nice. I'm a fan. Oh, okay. Never mind. This is... Oh, I think this is the coffee one, actually. In which case, I don't really taste coffee, unfortunately. It just tastes... Like the cream inside tastes sweet. So I think that's the coffee one. Because then we also have this. This would be the lemon one. Color coding makes sense. Alright, so I'm going to not open that one. Because it's probably going to taste pretty similar. Uh, the next one... I don't know if this is one. Alright, this might be one of the main ones. I don't know. We'll find out. It's got like pigs. I don't know if you can really see. But there's like pigs on there. Kinda can see. I'm gonna open this up and then I can figure out, based on what they look like, which one of these they are. Okay. Huh? What are these? Oh, okay. These are not with the featured, these are not one of the featured snack items, so I guess we're gonna be jumping around. These are cute though. I think my wife's gonna think these are really cute too. These are Matcha Koala No March, is what they're called. So there's a little koala bear on there. How cool does that look? Look at these little koala bears. Look at this. Look at this koala bear. That's cute. And it's just like this kind of, it looks kind of like a pretzel filled with something, but it looks like cookie-like. But it, it looks like it's kind of like an animal cracker type cookie. So I'm, I'm assuming by saying matcha, it's like matcha tea. Um, a very popular snack in Japan, these koala-shaped cookies are filled with delicious matcha chocolate. Okay, so like tea, chocolate. Oh. White chocolate. As you can see the green of the matcha. It has a lot of matcha flavor to it. Very green vegetal tea. Don't really taste much in the way of the, the white chocolate. Just a lot of matcha tea flavor in there. The cookie on the outside is very, very crispy. Light and refreshing. Um, I'm not huge on it, though. I'm not a huge matcha fan. And for me, putting tea in things isn't isn't a big draw. Um, I like tea on its own, but putting tea flavor in things a lot of times is kind of weird, especially when it's super green and vegetal, like matcha, which I know is probably going to end up happening quite a bit with some of these snacks because matcha is a very popular flavor in Japan. But, for what it's supposed to be, it's good. Well done. Okay, next, let's try out this one. Not sure what that is yet. Okay. Maybe this is one of the featured snacks from Chidoria. I think so. This looks like, I think that's what that is. Yes, okay. So this is one of the other ones from Chidoria. And this is Hanachidori. Uh, it feels very, very soft. Uh, it's a moist manju cake uh, made with top grade finely milled bean paste. Uh, it comes in two flavors, mellow white bean paste and the rich yellow bean paste mixed with egg yolks. Okay. So it's very doughy, like bready bun looking type thing. It's like kind of like a pancake. Very, very soft. Very soft. My teeth just cut right through this thing like butter. So this is the white, the mellow white bean paste, I believe. It's very, I mean, the color's not the best in this video. I'm sorry, I'll try and correct that. But it's like very white. You can get that bean quality. You know, like beans are like a little bit like granularly, you know what I'm talking about, like the bean consistency. It's like a slight bit mushy, grainy. It has that, but it's got a sweet kick to it. A little vanilla-y. You can get kind of an eggy note in there too. Pretty solid. I'm not 
super huge on that. I think I would like a red bean paste a little bit more. I'm more into the red bean paste ordeal. That one's alright. Alright, and then here's the other one from Shidoria. And this is a Tyrolean. So it looks like this might just be like a rolled up version of that Tyrolean hat that we had. But let me read about it real, fit up, uh, real fast. Sorry. These renowned Tyrolean roll cookies have been made using the same recipes and methods since the store opened in 1630. Using only the finest locally sourced ingredients from the island of Kyushu, they've continued to make these delicious treats for nearly 400 years. The inner cream filling comes in multiple flavors, chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, and coffee. So I believe this is supposed to be a coffee flavored one because it, te it tells you on the card for that one, the coloration, and it says a brown wrapper for the coffee one. So. Hopefully I can taste coffee in this, which I think I probably should be able to because there's a lot more cream in it. And I'll show you when I open that up. No! It's not cooperating. There we go. There we go. Alright. So it looks very much like something like a pyroline, if people are familiar with those. They're like coffee, considered kind of like coffee cookies. They're like really long and like rolled like this with a cream on the inside. And you can get them in the United States. So it looks just like a fatter version of a pure lean. Um, yeah, you can see all the cream in there. Smells good. Mm. One of the things that sucks about these, they just fall apart. They just like disintegrate once you bite in. It's good. It does taste a lot like the Tyrolean hat, but there's a lot more of the cream to it. I still don't think I really taste coffee, honestly. It's just like a little vanilla-y, buttery, creamy, sweet. So, yeah, I just don't get it. Oh, okay. Well, they gave us a few, actually. So here's the matcha, I believe. Oh, no, they don't have a matcha one. <laughs> this is the chocolate one. This one's chocolate. Okay, not going to open it because I did that one. And this one is strawberry. So that's cool. They've put some variety in there. I like that. Looking forward to the chocolate one a lot. Strawberry too, actually. So the coffee one, once again, it's not, it's not super coffee. So I got all the ones for, I'm sorry, I keep looking at the name, Chidoria. I just can't remember it. Um, so we had the that Tyrolean roll that we just had, the Tyrolean hat, and then the um, Hanachidori, which was like the little pancakey thing. Pretty good. I mean, and especially for the recipes being similar to what, f over 400 years ago. I mean, it's good. It's good. It's tasty. All right. So let's move on to the, some of the other popular snacks. We already had one, which was that koala thing. Uh, I'm always super interested in these. Are these all the same? Yes, these are all the same. So they gave us four of them, which I'm excited about, and it's Kit Kats. People out there, I don't know if you know, but if you're big into Japanese food and Japanese culture, you may know that there are tons of different flavors of Kit Kats in Japan. Like, I'm talking about a lot of different flavors. Flavors that never make it to the United States and probably never will make it to the United States because Kit, Kit Kat isn't that popular. It doesn't have that level of popularity in the U.S. So they have all these crazy flavors. Like, I had one that was pancake flavored. I had one that was uh, strawberry cheesecake flavored. There's tons of them. I think I have a wasabi one at one point. So here is one. This is a berry almond Kit Kat. Berry almond. Sounding very interesting. Uh, exclusive Kit Kat flavor you can only get in Japan. Matcha green tea Kit Kat topped with freeze dried raspberry, cherry, and almond. Sounds way more artisanal than you would assume a Kit Kat is going to be. So since it has a matcha flavor, we'll see what that translates to for how I will like it. And you can see that it's matcha. It's green. You can see all the, the berries and the nuts on top. There's definitely a lot of that matcha coming through, but... The berries and the nuts 
kick in not long after the matcha starts really building up. So it's like a very strong tea, vegetal flavor at first, and then it gets cut off by the, the berries. I guess it was the um, raspberries and cherries. And then they come in and you get like the, the cherry vibrancy and the fruitiness and a little bit of tartness from them. And then right after that, that flavor gets cut off and then the almonds come in and it's that nice nutty like toasted almond flavor. Um, there's a lot going on in that as I described. And it's pretty damn tasty. I like that. I'm not big on candy, but man, those Kit Kats are... Those Kit Kats are good. I'm a fan, man. That's really good. That's really good. That's way better than I thought it was going to be. Impressed. Mm. And I don't know all the information on this, but apparently the company that owns Kit Kat in Japan is different than the company that actually owns Kit Kat in the United States. Which, what does it say on here? Nestle. Nestle owns Kit Kat here. I think Kit Kat's owned by Hershey in the United States. I might be wrong on that. Don't quote me. But anyway. So the next thing is a milk country candy. Backed by popular demand, candy made with all natural organic Hokkaido milk. So it is. It's got some cows on there. As you can see, got some cows. We had a milk candy a few, a few boxes actually. One was like a strawberry milk candy. I don't think we've had like a milk milk candy, but it looks like milk. I guess it's just like milk. This might be a hard candy, so I might just suck it for a little bit and then take it out because there's one other treat in here. Yeah, it's a hard candy. I'm gonna suck on it for a little bit, get a flavor, and then I'll finish it later. That's interesting because literally it tastes like milk. It's creamy, a little bit vanilla, a little touch of vanilla to it. I'm guessing to just have like a little extra flavor. Yeah, and it's creamy and it tastes like vanilla milk. It's good. It is good. It's kind of like car like a caramel like light, you know? Like a light, very light flavor version of, of like a caramel that you would suck on, like a Werther's or something. It's good. It tastes good. And it's not, for having as much sugar in it as I assume it has, it's not crazy sweet. Because that creamy mouthfeel kind of like tamps down the sugariness. So that's nice. And then the last treat we have here is uh, by Meiji. And it is Apollo Strawberry is what it's called. I've never had something in one of these shaped packs before. I don't, oh, no, I did. In my first box, they had um, some um, chocolate-covered uh, senbai in a package, kind of like this. I think these are cool. I think the United States should get more into this type of stuff. Um, it's just easier to open. You can just pop them right open, which, why, why don't I just do that? Uh, so these are Apollo Strawberry, every Japanese child's favorite chocolate. These are made with milk, chocolate, and strawberries. Oh, my God. As soon as I opened this up, it was just like a waft of strawberry flavoring smell just nailed my nose. And as you can see, these little, let me put that down so I can see it. Chocolate on the bottom, strawberry on the top. Chocolate and strawberry. That's what it tastes like. Um, the strawberry doesn't taste very artificial, though. There's like a nice milk chocolate, very, very light, and the strawberry kind of comes out on top of that chocolatey flavor. Also very light, delicate, tastes a lot more like actual strawberries and not strawberry flavoring. So that's really nice. That's one of the things I really appreciate. I feel like a lot of times when I have snacks and candies from the United States when it's strawberry, it tastes like it's strawberry flavoring. It's a little bit chemically. Everything strawberry I've had, at least from this box, uh, it tastes like at least somewhat like actual strawberry and not like super chemical, like artificial strawberry. So I appreciate that. 
So anyway, that's it. Uh, that's all that's in there. I'm uh, super excited. My thing keeps trying to shut down on me. Super excited to uh, share all this with my wife. I feel like there was even more. There were even more items in this box than the last box and the one before that. Um, so I was actually surprised by how much was in there. And thank goodness that everything was individually packaged because, and they packaged the way it was, not in like, you know, some sort of like paper thing because the rain could have been ruining it. But really good. Uh, I'm a fan of the Snacku box. Snacku doing a really good job. Shigeki, you're doing an awesome job with these tasting boxes. Um, I want to remind people the price on this tasting box, $15.75. It's for the United States only though. So just know that. Uh, and that $15.75 includes shipping, includes tax, all that. It's a deal, in my opinion. You get to try some cool stuff each month. Uh, if you want to go bigger and better, though, they have one that is like between $35, $40, something like that. And you get a lot more items, and you get more of those items. So if you're looking for a lot more in a month, get it done. You can do it that way. I don't eat sweets sweet stuff all that often, but I want to be trying this stuff. So that's one of the main reasons I'm doing the tasting box and not the full size box. So anyway, with that information, go check out uh, Snack Coo. It's pretty damn tasty and cool. Uh, also, thank you for checking out this video. I really appreciate it. If people can help me out, subscribe, um, give me some likes, comments. We can talk about food, whatever you want, honestly, down there. And uh, yeah, thanks again. Spread the word about my channel. I would appreciate it. And if you have ideas for things that you might want to see me try to subscribe to in the future, other food boxes or collectibles boxes or whatever, I appreciate that too. So anyway, take it easy and until next time, keep it brutal.